G'day everyone, and welcome back to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to be talking about used oil analysis and how frequently and when we should be sampling. Simple topic, but there's many legs to it. In a previous video we talked about the P to F interval, and if you'll remember, that is the amount of time between when a problem starts and when, of course, the failure occurs. This is key to our understanding of how frequently we need to be taking used oil analysis samples. And let me illustrate that. So if we strip away everything else and just regard the amount of time between the problem P and the failure F. Okay, for argument's sake, let's, let's imagine a real world scenario. So let's talk about a bearing failure. So maybe there was some misalignment, right, when the bearing was installed, and that was the initiation of the problem P, and at some point, the operation degrades and the bearing catastrophically fails at point F. So what we want to do in engineering best practice is to schedule our used oil analysis samples at around half of the P to F interval. So why is that the case? Well, if we were to take half of this interval and assume that we sample at those regular points, half the P to F interval guarantees 99.99% of the time, we will actually be taking at least two samples between P and F. That gives us two opportunities to identify the problem P before it becomes a catastrophic failure, F. If we look at this in the reverse, what happens if we extend that timeline out? So for example, what if we were to pick a sample interval of two-thirds of the P to F interval? Well, what we see here is that for considerable portions, um, you know, we might only get one bite at the cherry, so to speak. Um, and if we miss that, it's going to result in a catastrophic failure. So this kind of gives you a bit of a flavor for um, why we pick the amount of time between samples that we pick. But the challenge that we have is that P to F intervals aren't consistent. So with bearing failures, what if we have a very severe misalignment? Right? This is going to accelerate wear, uh, it's going to accelerate vibrations, and this kind of failure can often be catastrophic in a very small amount of time. Similarly, if we have something really minor, maybe it's uh, a small amount of contamination with swarf, or maybe it's a very minor misalignment, the P to F interval is going to get very lengthened. So trying to pick a used oil analysis sampling interval can be a bit challenging because the P to F interval itself is not constant. So let's look at that. If you remember, P to F describes the time between onset and failure, and used oil analysis is just part of this suite of diagnostic tools that we have. So remember, there's also vibration analysis, infrared thermography, and a host of other um, diagnostics that we can use. And as I said, it's not constant, it's really difficult to measure, and it varies by failure mode, equipment type, the amount of load placed on it, whole bunch of uh, conditions. So for argument's sake, let's kind of estimate it using some statistics. So we can think of the P to F interval as having a distribution of values, right? Much like most people are about five foot 10 in height, well, most men, and you have the occasional person who is six foot nine and the occasional person who is less than five foot. Um, P to F intervals are normally distributed as well. So for a bearing, as an example, maybe most failure modes occur over a period of about 90 days or three months. You have the occasional catastrophic failure that occurs within hours and the occasional one that takes six months to a year to develop. But most of them are around that three month mark. So what does that mean for us? Well, as we vary the sample frequency, we can catch more or less of these failures. How does that look visually? So if we had a sampling frequency that is less than the mean P to F interval, that theoretically means that we should catch at least 50% um, of all the failure modes. If we reduced our sampling frequency to 60 days, 
then we would be able to catch a minimum of 84%, 45 days would be 93%, and 30 days would be almost 98%. So the message to take away from this is that it's the sampling frequency that is really critical to the success of your used oil analysis sampling program. Now, given that we've put a lot of complexity in this and we said it's highly variable, um, in actual fact, the industry has some really good rules of thumb for how often we should be sampling. And this table gives you a pretty good indication um, of how frequently you should be sampling. And you can see here that, for example, landfill gas engines, the oil drain intervals on those are really short, and that's why we recommend really regular sampling. So if you're operating your engines at, uh, all day, that's about once every 10 days. On the other hand, you know, gear drives and hydraulics, maybe once every three months is okay. Now I should stress, this table is very generic. If you had, for example, a hydraulic system, which was very critical to your operation, maybe you would want to consider sampling with a higher degree of frequency. This is kind of just a general rule of thumb. Anyway, I hope that information was helpful. If you have any questions, message me. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for listening. This has been Lubrication Explained.